so this is our lecture 21 uh, about uh, this lecture is about first law of uh, thermodynamics uh, or the energy equation for a control volume we will derive uh, the energy equation for a control volume we have seen the first law of thermodynamics uh, for a system and now we will see that for what does first law of thermodynamics for a control volume look like up till now in uh, chapter 5 we have uh, discussed uh, about uh, the Reynolds transport theorem uh, before that we discussed about uh, the system approach and the control volume approach what's the difference between the two then we derived the Reynolds transport theorem which is necessarily uh, the relationship uh, between uh, the system formulation and the control volume formulation uh, so uh, the aim to derive the Reynolds transport theorem is that because we want to use the Reynolds transport theorem to convert our system formulations uh, of uh, law of mechanics uh, to the control volume formulations. And uh, we have uh, done this or we have uh, derived the control volume formulations for law of conservation of energy which we call the continuity equation and uh, we have uh, done this for law of conservation of linear momentum which is also necessarily the second uh, newton's second law and uh, we call this momentum equation as well and now we are going to do this for uh, the energy equation so here on your screen you can now uh, see uh, this equation this equation uh, is uh, basically uh, first law of thermodynamics which you will be familiar with uh, uh, this equation actually states that uh, the internal energy uh, which is uh, uh, given as uh, q delta q or del u sorry uh, in this uh, uh, equation so del u is the internal energy q is the heat transfer rate into the system and uh, W is the work done by the system. So in short, the first law of thermodynamics states that uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It's actually a statement about uh, the conservation of energy. Uh, and uh, if we talk about uh, in terms of uh, rates, if we talk about in terms of uh, uh, rates uh, then excuse me yeah uh, laser pointer is over here yeah if we talk about in terms of uh, rates of energy transfer then the we can also write the first law of thermodynamics as time rate of uh, increase of the total energy stored uh, a total stored energy of the system is equal to net time rate of uh, energy addition uh, by heat transfer into the system plus net time rate of energy addition by work transfer into the system so uh, since we are equating it uh, with work transfer into the system so now we'll take it to be positive uh, this over here actually is the time rate of change of the stored energy of the system e actually represents the total stored energy of the system and uh, q dot uh, net in is the uh, time rate of energy addition uh, by heat into the system and w dot net in is uh, uh, work done on the system so that's why it's positive so heat transferred into the system and work done on the system is uh, taken as positive over here uh, where we actually define uh, the total energy per unit mass uh, as e is equal to u tilde where u tilde is the internal energy of the system plus p over rho where uh, p over uh, rho uh, where p over rho is actually the pressure energy or energy due to pressure stored in the system v square over 2 this is actually the kinetic energy of the system and uh, gz that's the potential energy of the system so uh, that's how we define e uh, then uh, 
we talk about the instant when the control volume and the system are coincident that's uh, that's a very standard practice that we have been doing uh, you must be very familiar with it now so at the instant where control volume and the system are coincident uh, we have this statement as q dot net in plus w dot net into the system is equal to q dot net in plus w dot net in uh, for the coincident control volume. So these rates of uh, uh, heat transfer and work transfer uh, into the control volume, uh, uh, they that is equal to the heat transfer plus work transfer into the system uh, for the instant when uh, the control volume is coincident with the system. So now we apply the Reynolds transport theorem with the B is equal to E, which is our energy per unit uh, mass. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the Reynolds transport theorem uh, with the B is equal to E. Uh, in words, uh, this statement uh, actually uh, means that uh, the first term on the left hand side is time rate of increase of the total stored energy of the system. And the second term on the right hand side is uh, time rate of increase of the total stored energy of the contents of the control volume. So that's uh, the rate of change of energy of, con of uh, the matter inside the control volume. And uh, that is net rate of flow of the total energy stored, uh, sto total stored energy out of the control volume through the control surface. So th since this is out, because, and this is taken to be positive and why do why are we taking out to be positive because of uh, this uh, dot product uh, we had already discussed it so because of this uh, dot product the outflow uh, will be positive and inflow will be negative uh, now uh, the control volume formula for the first law of thermodynamics since we know at, at the instant where uh, the control volume and system uh, are coincident uh, this uh, total rate of change of stored energy of the system is equal to uh, energy transfer uh, plus uh, work transfer uh, uh, into the control volume uh, for the instant where uh, control volume and uh, the system are coincident. Uh, what does this uh, work constitute? Um, this work, uh, this work could be actually pressure work or this could be a rotating shaft work or this could be a frictional work as well. Uh, whereas this Q dot net, uh, this Q involves all the ways of uh, energy exchange between a control volume and surrounding due to temperature difference. So this is heat transfer due to temperature difference and uh, W dot uh, represents all kinds of work that could be pressure, rotating shaft or frictional work. Uh, since uh, we had already included this pressure work uh, as energy, into our system so we can probably neglect uh, this pressure work over here and just consider this uh, work to be rotating shaft work or frictional work uh, for the uh, time being so so uh, now our law of conservation of energy for a control volume now uh, we replace uh, e to be uh, in its component form where E is equal to internal energy, internal energy per unit mass plus P over rho, which is uh, energy due to pressure, plus V square by two plus GZ. Uh, in CV formula of first law, we replace that. And uh, what we, uh, yeah, so this equation is now uh, in front of you. Now, uh, assuming that uh, the properties inside this integral, which is this integral over the control surface, they are uniform over the control surface, or in uh, in other sense, uh, assuming 1D flow or one-dimensional flow. This is also a very standard practice that we have been uh, doing when we were deriving the law of conservation of mass or uh, uh, law of conservation of linear momentum. Uh, so, 
assuming these properties to be uniform or flow to be one dimensional we can uh, change this integral to summation over all the outflows and all the inflows again all the outflows are taken to be positive and all the inflows are taken to be negative uh, for the time being we will even drop these summations as well uh, and we will uh, just assume uh, flow to be coming from a single inlet and outlet but uh, later on when we need we can just uh, add more inlets and outlets that is not a problem so further we uh, assume a steady flow and one inlet and outlet of the flow uh, also neglecting shaft work for now for now we are neglecting shaft work we know that pressure work we have already included as energy into our system uh, so uh, assuming these to be uniform they come out of the uh, integral and uh, we have this mass flow rate over here so uh, this uh, is the form of uh, law of conservation of energy for a control volume in front of us now uh, if you see this equation this uh, looks very similar to the Bernoulli equation that we had uh, seen uh, earlier uh, in third chapter as well so now we will uh, compare uh, the now we will uh, compare the Bernoulli uh, equation to our law of uh, conservation of mass for the control volume that we have derived now. Uh, but first the equation that we had uh, just written on our last slide, we divide that by mass flow rate and uh, rearrange it. Uh, also we assume incompressibility so rho is assumed to be constant so you can see that uh, now instead of uh, a whole as a whole p uh, by rho out we have just written p out divided by rho since rho has uh, rho is taken as constant so yeah we have divided by mass flow rate since we have divided by mass flow rate so the q dot net that was on the right side uh, divided by m dot that is now uh, rate of heat transfer per unit mass and we represent it by lowercase q so that's q net n and the internal energy we have taken both the internal energies u out minus u in on the right hand side now this form of equation this looks very similar to the Bernoulli equation we have written Bernoulli equation uh, over here as well remember uh, the assumptions for the Bernoulli equation uh, they are written in front of you we assume the Bernoulli equation uh, we, we assume that we can only apply Bernoulli equation if the flow is steady incompressible inviscid and along a streamline so we have written Bernoulli equation with these uh, four assumptions as uh, between outlet and inlet and uh, it's written as p out over rho plus p out squared by 2 plus g z out is equal to p in by rho plus b in square by 2 plus g z in and uh, this equation is uh, now we can see the similarity between uh, the just written energy equation and uh, this Bernoulli equation uh, that we have right now this is the energy equation that we have and this is the Bernoulli equation uh, so what is the difference between this energy equation and the Bernoulli equation when the steady incompressible flow is also frictionless uh, uh, we in deriving this equation we have uh, assumed the flow to be steady till now we have assumed the flow to be incompressible and maybe we can assume that uh, the outlet and inlet could lie along a streamline uh, but the only assumption that is different between this energy equation and this Bernoulli equation is the uh, assumption of being frictionless or this inviscid assumption that the fluid is inviscid or the flow is frictionless if we for this equation if we assume the flow to be frictionless as well then this means that uh, this quantity which is uh, being written in brackets over here this uh, u tilde out minus u tilde in which is internal energy uh, out minus internal energy in uh, minus uh, rate of heat transfer into the system per unit mass this should be equal to zero if the 
flow is frictionless. Uh, this uh, Q dot net in could be zero if uh, the rate of uh, heat transfer uh, in and out of the system is equal or if the process is adiabatic. Uh, you might have seen that in uh, studied about the adiabatic process in thermodynamics. So for study incompressible flow with friction, uh, if uh, the friction is involved, then we know according to second law of thermodynamics, uh, this thing you uh, dot out this must uh, be greater than zero. So this actually represents uh, the losses due to friction. Uh, P over rho plus V square by two plus G Z is called the useful energy available, and uh, this uh, term is actually called or called the friction losses. So now with this uh, information, we write our uh, energy equation as p out by rho plus v out squared by 2 plus g z out is equal to p in by rho plus v in squared by 2 plus g z in minus the losses and uh, we know that we represent losses uh, like this so now uh, we again bring in the shaft work or shaft work per, per unit um, mass flow rate and uh, we add it over here in this equation so now this equation which is uh, inside this box over here this is called the mechanical energy equation or also called as the extended uh, Bernoulli equation uh, this involves energy per unit mass and has uh, units of feet square per second square or uh, Newton meter which is also equal to meter square per second square uh, if we divide uh, this equation by G, uh, then this P out will be rho G and uh, we realize that rho G is equal to gamma, which is a specific weight. Then we can write this uh, mechanical energy uh, equation as uh, P out over gamma plus P out square over 2G plus Z out uh, is equal to P in over gamma plus V in square over 2G plus Z in plus HS minus HL. Uh, this HS uh, is equal to W shaft net in or uh, uh, work uh, done by shaft uh, per unit mass divided uh, per unit mass flow rate divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, so this is the shaft head work and HL is equal to losses over G is the head loss. Both HL and HS uh, have uh, units of length which is meter or feet and this equation this is actually called head form of uh, energy equation uh, and it, it has units of feet or meter had uh, uh, we, we, we had already discussed about head as well we talked about uh, head form of Bernoulli equation as well in briefly uh, in our lectures when we were studying Bernoulli equation so head is uh, defined as energy per unit weight so if we uh, talk about British Imperial unit, so energy uh, is uh, foot pound and per unit weight, weight is in pound. So foot pound per pound, this will be feet. So head has unit of feet or uh, in uh, international system of units, Newton meter divided by Newton, this will also be meter. So head has units of uh, length. Uh, Total head, we define the total head as uh, H is equal to P over gamma plus V square over 2G plus Z. Or if we want to write this uh, head form of energy equation uh, in short form, we can also write it as uh, head uh, at the outlet is equal to head at the inlet uh, plus the shaft work minus uh, the losses due to friction or some other losses.